Welcome to Animals and Friends, the show about animals in the community and the people who love them. My name is Julie Bank and I'm the president and CEO of the Pasadena Humane Society. I'm also today's host. With me is the cutest co-host. This is Frankie. Frankie is 10 years old, a poodle, and one of the available animals at the Pasadena Humane Society. Now this April episode is filled with spring fun. You're gonna learn about ways to help animals, activities to get involved, and some behavior tips so you can be a responsible pet owner. Let's start off our show. I'm gonna send you over to Preston, who's with Sundance, a distinguished 10-year-old fella. Thanks, Julie. I'm here with Sundance, our 10-year-old Chihuahua lap dog extraordinaire. He's stolen everybody's hearts, super sweet, loves to be in your lap, uh, sits on command, He's very treat motivated, so that's going to be a great tool for helping him learn all of his basic commands. And he's available for adoption now, so come see him and all his friends here at the Pasadena Humane Society. Sundance is a cutie. I understand that he loves to go for walks and meet big dogs and that he is a volunteer favorite. And speaking of volunteers, April is Volunteer Appreciation Month. And with me is one of our spectacular volunteers. I have Mei Wong here. And Mei, you are a volunteer at the Pasadena Humane Society. We are so thankful to you and the other volunteers for all that you do. And because it's April, we wanted to talk more about being a volunteer. Yeah. Welcome. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me here today. So happy. So first of all, tell us about you. Tell me about what you're about and why you became a volunteer in the first place. Right. Well, I spend a lot of time working in finance, so that's my full-time job. But really, my passion is working with animals. I think they've always been a big part of my life, and I think that it's very important for everybody to give back to the community in any way, shape, or form that makes sense to them. To me, it's just really helping the animals. And Pasadena Humane Society has so many opportunities for volunteers. I mean, if you like critters, you like dogs, you like cats, there's something for you. So you say you do finance all day. Mm -hmm. What would be a difference between staring at your computer and doing your numbers to when you come into be a volunteer and spend time. I think you do dogs, right? I do dogs and I do cats. Cats so and I, dogs. So okay, I do awesome. dog enrichment and I'm part of the cats adoption team. So cat and so I volunteer at offsite at a local uh, pet food store, which is just in Pasadena. So how does it make you feel when you're working with the animals? I'm sure very different than when you're staring right. at the computer. Right. So you know, in front of a computer, you know, you do feel a little bit isolated. You don't have that interaction. When you go and see the animals, it's that socialization, it's that feeling that you're making an impact, a difference with them. Your heart really warms up, and you're able to really feel like you're making an impact somewhere. Numbers, it's fun. You're learning something, but it doesn't feel quite the same as working with animals directly. So now you could choose to volunteer anywhere. Why did you specifically choose to volunteer at the Pasadena Humane? I think it's the people. Every single person that I've met, my um, the volunteer heads, you. I mean, I think it's very inspirational, very motivating. The passion that these people feel about finding an animal a loving forever home. I think that mission statement comes across so clearly and when I'm, I'm on the campus and I'm volunteering, I feel the energy of those people and they really motivate and inspire me to be a volunteer to come, you know, week after week and really try to f find a way for me to make an impact too. Which you're doing every time. Now when you first decided to become a volunteer, can you tell us a little bit about what the process was and how have you learned how to do the job that you do? Right, so I started volunteering about four years ago, and there's a, you know, a very straightforward application process, but it's amazing how many orientation, programming, training stuff that are online available for the volunteers. So I think that the volunteer program office really recognized that there are tools to help people do a better job at what they're doing. So I think with those tools online, talking with uh, you know, the various volunteer coordinators who shared their experience, providing tips on how I can better interact with the dogs and the cats and do a better job. I think those tools are readily available for me. So I know there are so many experiences that you've had with the animals and the people that you work with, but can you think of one experience that really highlights what being a volunteer has meant to you? 
Right. So when I'm working with cats and adoptions and trying to find them the perfect forever home, I think one experience that really highlights something really special to me is that senior cats. I think senior cats get overlooked all the time because they're in the double digits and people don't feel like cats live that long, but that's absolutely not true. There's so many cats at 10, 12, 13 years old that has so much energy and we really want to provide that information to the community that these cats can be really special and can be part of your family for a long time. So whenever I'm involved with an adoption where I'm meeting a senior cat that we have an adopter that wasn't sure about a special cat like that, we provide them all the tools, the information, and you know we win them over with that and then they realize that they can still have a pet with them for a very long time. That's great. Uh, you know we talk a lot about the two-legged relationship but I'm sorry, the four-legged relationship, but have you met any people there that become friends or have long-term relationships with just by volunteering yeah. every day? I mean, so I've been there for four years, so I've met all sorts of people. Like, we have people who are, you know, in high school that are really still trying That's to figure right. out what they want to do, and I become friends with high schoolers or people who have, you know, retired, and they're in a totally different part of their life. So age, what your background is, none of that really matters. I think when people are passionate about animals, you make lifetime friendships there very easily. So last question for you is, what would you say to somebody out there who's listening right now and we're maybe thinking about becoming a volunteer but hasn't really made that decision? What would you say to them to make the decision to become a volunteer at the Pasadena Humane Society? Give it a try. You never know. Pasadena Humane Society, the people who are involved are so friendly, so kind. Like I said, there's tons of different programs you can get involved in. I think you just need to go out there, get the information. I think it'll inspire you, motivate you, and then maybe that's all you need is just sign up and start volunteering there. So I can't thank you enough and the rest of the 1,500 volunteers that we have at the Pasadena Humane Society. We could not do what we do without you. We are here today to say we appreciate you, appreciate the efforts that you and our, your fellow volunteers do. We can't thank you enough, and we hope that you folks out there consider becoming a volunteer today. You can learn more at PasadenaHumane.org about all the different things that May was just talking with you about and how to get involved. Thank yeah. you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. May is just one of the many amazing volunteers we have at the Pasadena Humane Society. Please consider joining our volunteer corps today. So now I'd like to send you over to Joan, who has a beautiful little kitten named Jamie to show you. Hi everyone, this is Jamie. She's a cute two-month-old kitten here at the Pasadena Humane Society. She's currently living in our kitten communal room because she just graduated kitten kindergarten. Our staff and volunteers report that she loves to play, 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 play. And she's actually purring right now. She really enjoys a uh, quiet lap time. Also with her siblings, you'll often find her cuddling with them. Jamie's favorite treats are ones with fish in it and her toys are feather toys. Come by and meet Jamie here at the Pasadena Humane Society. So who doesn't want a kitten in their home? You can get your kitten today at the Pasadena Humane Society. We're open every day except for Monday for adoptions. Now when you're at the Humane Society, you will see a program called the Blue Ribbon Program. It's where we teach dogs basic manners so that they can be perfect pets in your home. Here's more information about that program now. Hi there, my name's Jessica and I'm the Behavior Coordinator here at the Pasadena Humane Society and this is Cody. Cody is going to help me explain to you today about the Blue Ribbon Award. And what I mean by the Blue Ribbon Award is an award that we give to our shelter dogs once they've learnt three basic manners cues. Those manners cues are sit, lie down, and stay. Volunteers teach the dogs these manners cues not only to keep them focused and stimulated throughout their stay here, but also so that adopters have something that they can use as a tool once they get their dog into the home. So let's see if Cody's ready to earn his Blue Ribbon Award today. Can you sit? What a good boy. Lie down. Good job. Okay. And now for the most difficult of all three cues, the stay. 
gonna put Cody into a sit. You sit. Good boy. Stay. Good boy. Okay, good job. So uh, Cody just earned his blue ribbon. That means that he receives a discounted adoption fee and he is ready for his new home today. Come adopt your blue ribbon dog today. And speaking of behavior, we have lots of classes to help you teach your animal at home those same type of behaviors. Right now, I'd like to send you over to Preston, who has a beautiful rabbit to show you named Ziggy. Hi again, I'm here with Ziggy this time. He's a sweet little two-month-old bunny rabbit. He is very social and easy to handle. He loves playing with his litter mates. They cuddle and play and run and have an all-around good time. So if you're interested in adopting a bunny or any of the other animals here at the Pasadena Humane Society, we look forward to your visit. Rabbits are amazing animals for families that don't necessarily want a dog or a cat. Consider adopting a rabbit today. Now, speaking of families, especially those that have children, the Pasadena Humane Society has a really wonderful program called Barks and Books. It's where we incorporate animals and literacy. Watch for more information. Inside the library behind me, you may be surprised to find a four-legged friend ready to take a journey of imagination with your child. We are here at the Lamanda Park Library in Pasadena and we are here for our Barks and Books program, the Pasadena Humane Society's Reading Enrichment Program for Kids. The program is at libraries throughout Pasadena as well as in other cities and our volunteers come with their trained dogs to um, help kids gain confidence in reading. So there's a selection of animal themed books that the kids can pick out and they read to um, one of our therapy dogs. The program uses all different kinds of dogs. So we have dogs that have been adopted from the Pasadena Humane Society um, and we have dogs that have been rescued from other organizations. There are large dogs, small dogs, all kinds of different dogs um, and the, um, all the owners are volunteers at the Pasadena Humane Society so it is a, they are a volunteer team. Well, Puck is a, a therapy dog, and what's so unique about Puck, she loves everyone for a start, but she can be very calm. And I think for children who are sometimes a little nervous about other dogs, especially a big dog, that's really good. And she's, she'll stay quiet, she won't bark, she won't uh, jump up on them. She'll just snuggle them and uh, look at you, look at them with her woeful eyes, you know, that just say, pet me, love me, pet me, love me. I like reading to Puck because she's super cute and I like reading. The program serves kids from all over Pasadena and um, there are a lot of kids who are becoming better readers because they're coming to the program. We have kids that come every single week and they really, really look forward to seeing their favorite dog and getting to read about animals. I've seen kids who come to this program regularly really make a huge leap in terms of confidence in reading and they're reading with greater enunciation, greater confidence, greater uh, expression. It's great because the dogs sometimes look like they're really listening to what's being said. Um, I've seen kids hold up the books so that the dog can see the pictures as well. So it's like a mini story time too. And it's great not only for reading, but it gives uh, kids a way to experience animals that they may not um, have an opportunity to interact with in a different sort of space. In addition to teaching reading confidence, it also teaches kids to be um, uh, comfortable around animals to learn to ask before you pet it things like that so it's kind of a win-win both for books and reading and for um, animals. Barks and Books happens all over Pasadena so to find an upcoming location near you visit PasadenaHumane.org. We 
actually have the Barks and Books program in 11 different cities in the San Gabriel Valley. Visit our website for a Barks and Books program near you. Now, we were talking about dog training before. We're going to talk about it again. I'd like to send you over to Jessica, who can teach you about clicker training. Hi everyone, my name is Jessie and I'm the behaviour coordinator here at the Pasadena Humane Society. When we're training the shelter dogs or the members of the public with their own dogs in classes, we use the clicker as a training tool. What that means is if you pair it with food, you can have this nice communication um, where the clicker ends up being a precursor to reinforcement. So what happens is when your dog does something good or something that you've asked them to do, you click. That means you essentially take a snapshot of the behavior that you were looking to achieve and then you follow it up immediately with a treat. The clicker should never be used just to get your dog's attention. It should always be a one-to-one -one ratio of click and treat. The click should be given to your dog once you've seen the behavior that you know you were looking for. So always know what you want to train before picking up the clicker to try to use it. Can you sit? That's a good boy. So you'll see right as Peppa's butt touches the ground, that's when I click and then I immediately follow no more than a second to a second and a half later with that treat so that you can maintain that really close relationship between marking the behavior and then giving them their reinforcement. The dog over time learns that the click means that they did something right and that they get food for it. And then over time you, get, you pick up this nice consistent habit to where you can start to wean off the, the click and the treat and your dog just knows it by cue. Thanks for listening everyone. Happy clicking! As you can see, clicker training is really easy and it's a great way for you to teach your animal to sit, stay, and down. Now let's send you over to Joan, who has a beautiful little hamster to introduce you to named Weebit. Hi everyone, this is Weebit. He is a six month old teddy bear hamster. Yep, that's right, that is his breed. He is a teddy bear hamster. He is super cute, very social. He actually came in with several of his siblings Hamsters are really great pets, especially for children. I have one currently in my office. Uh, they need lots of enrichment, socialization, and definitely a variety of different kinds of foods. You're talking about leafy vegetables, fruits, and proteins to keep them happy and healthy. Come check out Weebit at the Pasadena Humane Society. That little hamster reminds me of the one I had when I was a kid. You should get your hamster today. Now each month, we send you information on how you can get your children involved in making a difference in the lives of animals through our Kids for Animals program. I'm gonna send you over to Chris, who's gonna teach you how to make dog bandanas. Hi, my name is Chris, Humane Education Coordinator here at the Pasadena Humane Society. And today, I have Lila, one of our Kids for Animals. Kids for Animals is Pasadena Humane Society's community engagement program designed for kids and young adults under the age of 18 who are interested in getting involved with animals. Now, Lila, how long have you been a kid for animals? 11 months. Great. So Lila is actually here with me, and she's going to help us make dog bandanas. Now, Lila, is it true that you love dogs? Definitely. OK, perfect. So what we're going to do first is Lila is going to make sure that we have all the right materials that you'll need to make dog bandanas. So first you're going to need a large paper bag, a pen or pencil, a ruler or measuring tape, a pair of scissors, and quilting material. So Lila, we have all the right materials? Yes. Okay. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to take your brown paper bag and you're going to lay it on a flat surface. First, because we're making a medium-sized dog bandana, Lila would measure 26 inches across. She would then make an 8-inch line down. And then you would connect all the points together. And when you connect all the points together, what do you get? A triangle. Perfect. So your final product is going to be a triangle. Does that look good? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. So once we have the pattern, you're gonna choose your material. So out of these, Lila, which one do you like best? The dog. Okay, perfect. So once you have your material ready, you're gonna lay it down on a surface. You're gonna take your triangle pattern and you're gonna lay it on top of the fabric. And using your scissors, you're simply gonna trace alongside the pattern on the quilt material. And the final product will actually turn out like this. Doesn't that look good? Yes. Okay, perfect. So Lila, because we have the final product ready, you wanna try this on a stuffed dog. Yes. All right, you hold that. Now while Lila ties that on, the reason we make dog bandanas for our shelter dogs is so they look really nice here at the shelter and it actually helps them get adopted more quickly so they can go to their forever homes. So once you tie a knot, and usually when we tie these on dogs, we do two knots to make sure it's tightly attached. Ooh, that looks good. I like that. You did a good job. Thank you. All right. So this is what the final product will look like once we put it on our shelter dogs. Again, thank you very much for coming, Lila. You're welcome. Okay. If you have any more questions, you can go to our website, PasadenaHumane.org forward slash kids for more craft ideas. Thanks for watching. Thanks Chris and Lila for showing us that great activity. Now to the events for the month of April, starting with the Pints for Paws program at the Golden Road Brewery. Enjoy an evening at this local brewery in support of the animals at the Pasadena Humane Society. That's going to be held on Thursday, April 12th from 6 to 9 p.m. Have questions about your pet or how to be a responsible pet owner? Consider coming to the Pet Parent 101 program. That's going to be held on Saturday, April 14th from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. at the Pasadena Humane Society. It's free, no RSVP required, but please leave your pets at home. Does your animal need his vaccines? Consider coming to the low-cost vaccine clinic for dogs and cats. Microchipping and pet licensing services are also available. That's going to be held on Saturday, April 21st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Jackie Robinson Community Center in Pasadena. For all you kids out there, come to one of our Animal Adventurers Workshop. This month, it's Too Many Pets, Too Few Homes. This program is all about pet overpopulation and what you can do to help make a difference. It's perfect for ages 8 through 12. It's going to be held on Saturday, April 28th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. You can register at PasadenaHumane.org slash kits. For all you golf lovers out there, consider joining us at the 19th annual Dog Legs, Birdies, and Eagles Golf Tournament. This golf tournament returns to Pasadena's exclusive Annandale Golf Club. Come and join us for a full day of golfing with 18 holes of golf in a spectacular setting, an on-course lunch, and a celebration dinner. That's going to be held on Monday, April 30th. For this program and all the others, you can visit us at PasadenaHumane.org. Frankie and I would like to thank you for joining us this episode, and we hope you tune in again for our May edition coming soon. And remember, this guy needs a home. He's so cute. Come to the Pasadena Humane Society today.